Hello, I am the Boogie Pop Assassin, baby, and this is my good friend, Brother Bob the Brutal. Say hello, Brother Bob. Uh, Brother Bob is indisposed of at the present time, but hey, that won't stop you from rolling you up one now. Of course... If that's your thing now, far be it for me to cast dispersions and judgment upon anybody. So, get ready for the local band smoke out. local band smoke out. What's up, guys? Welcome to another local band smoke out. I'm your host, is Tyler the Most BG, and I'm hanging here with my good buddies in the Boogie Pop Assassin all the way out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Uh, we're doing good. Uh, outstanding. Doing great. Excellent. If you guys could, could you first go around the room and introduce yourself and let us know what you do in the band? Dr. Watson, percussion. My name is Ben, uh, Ben Babb, and I play bass. And I'm the Boogie Pop Assassin. I write a little music. I play some guitar, sing, and cause a lot of problems for people. And we got we got a special guest behind you. The brutal one himself has been kind enough to join us. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Brother uh, Bob the Brutal. And uh, what? What's that? Huh? I'm <laughs> uh, uh, brother Bob said he loved your show. Hell yeah, thank you, Brother Bob. We, Give me a hell yeah. we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get started. How and when did the band start? Well, I kind of started the project. Uh, I was thinking about that yesterday. I think it was over seven years ago. And, uh, oh, Lordy, uh, told us so many times, and how is it I forget? But, uh, uh, me and the original bass player had a lot of guys come and go, and uh, to make a long story short, uh, I got lucky enough to run up on uh, Doc uh, Watson here, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd already done an album uh, in the studio by myself, so I was looking for some good band members, and I went through a lot of drummers, and I finally looked up on this guy, and things just clicked like that. It's like... Uh, uh, we dug uh, the same type of music. Uh, he played the same style I was looking for, and it just really, me and him just went together like that. Uh, we, uh, our other bass player, he had to go bye bye, and uh, so we found <laughs> a uh, a very talented and a real good spirited, cool guy, Ben Bab here, and we've been, I guess we've been together around two years now working on on an album and we played to shoot a few shows on and off we're going to be playing some more probably in august and september excellent so in in tennessee stuff's kind of like coming back to normal right now even though covid's kind of revamping all over again unfortunately but right now at the given moment you guys are having shows in tennessee like not necessarily yeah. yourself but there's shows all around going on uh, oh yeah and uh, i've even uh uh, we was actually uh, booked on a tour through our former record label, and uh, uh, we had to cancel some real big shows in, like, Chicago at real nice places but because of COVID. But from what I understand, uh, all those are opening back up. So uh, uh, later on in September afterwards, if we uh, do another small tour, which I foresee, uh, we'll be going to Chicago and just Denver, just different places. Cool. Uh, what, when you picked the name, the Boogie Pop Assassin, A, what does it actually mean to you, and how did you come up with the name? That's a great question. <laughs> no one knows the answer, but hell, 
and he's not telling us. <laughs> it's a mystery. We don't even know. <laughs> um, let's just say, um, God, how should I put it? Uh, it was a uh, somewhat uh, a political group that uh, kept great secrets, and uh, later on down the road, I just decided that hey, this is. Uh, Going to be a good band name, so I went ahead and I, um, I went ahead and I named myself the Boogie Pop Assassin, and I had it uh, you know, listed as a business and uh, all that. If if we told you the real truth, we, we'd have to give you a lobotomy probably, and that's all we have to talk. <laughs> no, no, no. We just, no, he, he just smoked some that real good herb of his. Yeah. He wouldn't remember the next right day. On. Yeah. Hey, I, I hear you there, buddy. I hear you there. I just just hit it a yeah, second ago too. Uh, what's everyone's bad habits in the band? Oh, man, uh, we don't have that long. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, yeah. Good habits? Uh, not many. Bad, well, I there smoke too much. I smoke too many cigarettes. Uh, I don't, I, I'm don't. i not really much of a, a drug user, per se. I think these guys partake of in a lot of uh, little things here and there. Uh, I smoke too much. and uh, Edibles, water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't get enough exercise, and uh, I think that's my bad habits. What about you? Um, but definitely, oh, definitely right. four twenty friendly in the band for sure. Me, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I'm cool with it, you know. But these two, oh yeah. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. We got an old hippie right here, so yeah. You know. Excellent. Uh, I'm sorry, I cut you off, Doc. Oh no no no! I'm just saying, yeah. We're, we're, we've been around for a while, so uh, we're uh, quite now, experienced. Who who is the deadhead? That is that uh, this. That, yeah, that that would be uh, yeah, that would be uh, me. What was, the basis, Ben? Ben, what was it? What was it like following Grateful Dead around for years? I just imagine like at the time that was probably your or still is your favorite band. I, I just think it'd be cool to just follow them from from from. I don't know if you went to countries, but I'm assuming just in the States, you kind of bounced around. But what was that experience like? I, did, I stayed in the States, yes. Uh, and I, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have started it sooner because, uh, of course, Jerry, you know, we lost Jerry, I think, in 95 it was. And so I wish I'd have started sooner. I would have caught more shows. But uh, it's, uh, it's it's hard to explain. If you've never – if you've been to one, uh, self-explanatory. If you've not – uh still have they still tour half the band still tours and they're, they're on the east coast right now they're called dead and company uh and uh, it's a it's a whole nother world it's great learn a lot of things uh meet a lot of people uh, learn a lot of different music too i'm sure do a lot of partying too oh <laughs> uh, yeah yeah from what i remember <laughs> yeah boogie how did you link up with michael davis and ben bolt well, it's uh, Michael Davis was a guitar teacher in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, at a place called Hugh Booth Music in the 80s. And now he used to play in the 1970s uh, in a fairly fairly popular band called Jacaranda. Uh, they would go on big tours with people like the uh, Atlantic Rhythm Section and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I think he might have had a song or two that kind of hit the charts real quick and Kind of came back down, you know, but uh, uh, he was my guitar teacher there for a bit. Uh, later on, I had a guitar teacher by the name of Ben Bolt, and uh, he was really uh, a good guy. Um, uh, he taught me how not to be discouraged with my guitar playing and to keep practicing. But later, years later, down the road, uh, I found out that uh, at the same time I was taking lessons from him in the 80s, they was a uh, another famous guitar player taking lessons from him at that time too you know so that's the that's the you're referring to the weezer guitarist that was there too? yeah uh brian bell of weezer uh i uh, looked it up on wikipedia and then you know i talked to some people too we're both from the same town of knoxville tennessee but uh yeah he took guitar lessons from ben bolt about the same time i did but, you know, that was long before uh, Weezer or the Boogie Pop Assassin was ever even thought about. And I don't, their chances are we've walked by each other because uh, we would go in that store so much, but I don't think we've ever talked or anything. For sure. That's still kind of a cool story, though. 
Um, what kind of music do you guys jam on the side when you're when you're not pl like rehearsing or playing? Like, what what kind of music do you just jam in your personal time? Quite a, ro a wide variety. Um, we're all classic rock by nature, but we love some new rock. Uh, some old. 80s metal, 90s metal. Anything you guys like? Uh, we we like to we like to get lost sometimes. Just you know, we find a we find a riff and a rhythm and a beat and uh, a lot like uh, well a lot like the Grateful Dead will do. Uh, you, you know, just turn a, a five minute song into a, a 25 minute song. I love that. Yeah. Just just jamming, just letting it ride, and you just get right. Track, I like sucked I, in a track I like with Hendrix. Me. I like Kiss, Black Sabbath, but uh, as time evolved, you know, I got into Metallica, Megadeth. Uh, uh, then of course I got into the uh, uh, stuff like Alice in Chains and Stone Temple Pilots. So uh, I've always evolved with the music, but the music has got to rock. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, though. The other day I was digging into some Billy Joel. Mm -hmm. And uh, every now and then I'll listen to some Pink Floyd. I enjoy some old Pink Floyd and uh, even some of the old David Boy stuff. And uh, I think that's that's how we kind of keep our maybe uh, kind of a melodic value to the songs, I would think, I guess. When Definitely I an open mind. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Now, you mentioned Kiss, and I did read that uh... – a Kiss album changed your life when you were about 10, 11 years old. Can you name the album by Kiss and how exactly did it change you? Well, let me just give a real quick backstory before that. I was listening to this crappy music on the radio uh, on the way <laughs> back from school. God, am I Dancing terrible. queen. Yeah, I, you know, it's no wonder I turned out the way I did. What did they expect? You know, I was exposed to horrible music. And uh, I never did really get a good taste of hard rock and roll. And uh, some guys on the bus was talking about a band called Kiss. And uh, I got the album Rock and Roll Over. And um, I, I, I put it on the song I Want You. And within the first 20 seconds... Uh, that song, I mean, it just lit me up like a firecracker. I said, man, I got to be a rock star someday. I love and, it. Uh, I just hadn't quit. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. Notice the boots. Oh, yeah. Got them. Uh... They're, they're anatomically correct. They are seven and a half inches. Uh, they hell. call me. And they got, they got the spikes, too. Unlike his, mine has spikes, and they are sharp. Uh, That's they, funny. They, they, they are. Drive over here. Him, so they, I know they are. Yeah, on, on the drive over here, Ben and I were listening to Kiss Alive. Yeah. Coincidentally enough, yeah, that's a good album. I have only seen Kiss once, and you would never guess how. Um, How's that? Gene Simmons at one time owned an arena football league, and it was struggling. Sure, it, it was struggling so bad that they had ten dollar tickets, and it included a Kiss halftime show. So uh, I, mean, I told a buddy, and I was like, "We just have to go, just because to see Kiss for ten dollars." And they played an acoustic set at halftime, so I've not seen the pyrotechnics full on show, but I, I would love to someday. Wow, that's cool. And well, he's, uh, Gene Simmons is a good businessman as well. Hell yeah, he is. Hey, what do you? What's your guys' favorite munchy snacks? Uh, like you're uh, baked, wow. you're 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 drunk on Nachos. some wine. Nachos, nice. Yeah. Uh, bag of chips. I like munch munchos uh, and fuego. Uh, yeah, takis, takis. Hell yeah, Toggies are bomb. Yeah. Spicy. Oh, God, it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Um, oh God. Hamburgers, hot dogs, I like yeah. barbecue. Uh, uh, I really like a good thick T-bone steak and some shrimp. And, you know, I, I live beyond my means. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. I love a steak too. Yo, if you guys could tour with anyone, like let's say you're the opening band for this ginormous band on a world tour, what band would you prefer it be? Wow, we all might have different answers. I'm curious, who would it be? The Who. <laughs> who? The Who? Yeah. who? Yeah. The two surviving members, anyway. Uh, the uh, Who. I love that band. Uh, well, it would have to be the Boogie Pop Assassin. Well, no, I, you can't open up for the Boogie Pop Assassin because you're in the Boogie Pop Assassin. <laughs> well, maybe you can. Okay. Got right. it. Right. It's a free country. If you want to open up for us, 
But remember, you're just going to work twice I'll, as hard that night. I will. And you don't have to pay me overtime. Okay. Well, all right. All right. We've got all a right. support act. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would, uh, I think I'd, I'd kind of dig uh, opening up for like Alice Cooper or Rob Zombie, you know, I think. Uh, I think I Alice think, Cooper uh, would be perfect. Alice Cooper would be a perfect fit for you guys. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, the uh, we kind of, you know, when money allots it, we, we try to like to put on a kind of wild stage production as well. You know, we got the smoke and the lasers and all that. Speaking of which, we should give a... Uh, a shout out to uh yeah jeff lawrence who does jeff our sound. lawrence who yes. does our sound and lighting and uh when we do our shows he does a phenomenal job he he, he does uh some of the wardrobe as well and i've got a couple of other thank yous at the end of the show if you don't mind me oh yeah that's totally cool shout out to jeff what's up jeff all right <laughs> Hey, one album, you're stuck on an island, and somehow you were able to grab one album before you got to the to the island. What is the one album? It's the only album you can ever listen to the rest of your life, and it cannot be a burnt CD. Oh, hmm. man, not a mix. Uh, Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind. Nice. That's, yeah, that's pretty close. Oh. Oh, God almighty, man. He stumped us on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hard to think. Well, it, don't it, think too much about it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm going to say, I'm going to, God I'm gonna, smack Kiss. I'm going to say Kiss Dynasty. Kiss Dynasty? No, yeah, I, I, the disco album. That's a, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. You smoked a little bit before this show. That, 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 that a cheap trick. Uh, <laughs> Live I like that one. I, oh, I, cheap trick was good. I've seen yeah, him yeah. in concert. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 mine. Oh God, maybe uh, maybe some Pete Floyd. Because I think if I'm stuck on an island by myself, I'm gonna be upset and I'm gonna have to relax. Animals is a great album. Animals oh, is yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Wish you were here. Uh, you know that would be a good. Uh, I mean, I like islands. But anyway, yeah. very cool. Um, you guys named the album "Tears of Gasoline." What was the thought process behind naming it that? Oh God, I'm, I'm gonna get people pissed off. I don't care. That's what I do. Uh, well, it's mostly uh, <laughs> you got. You got to remember, I'm anti New World Order. I'm, um, you know, I'm anti globalist uh, so tears of gasoline was just like kind of the way the world's what it's evolving into and uh, I actually wrote that song probably years probably five or six years before I even got to record it so I was real pissed off at the time but uh, tears of gasoline is basically uh, what we all as a uh, I guess a, uh, a country the greatest country in the world and the rest of the world have to suffer through with a globalist government that's trying to uh, do a corporate takeover, so to speak. So uh, that's kind of revolves around that, and, you know, even the lyrics and everything. Cool. That makes sense. That's a good Corruption answer. in our system is basically kind of what that means, I guess. Gotcha. Uh, what is the hardest song that you guys perform live? Like, like the most demanding physically? Or bitch, Gazi, bitch. <laughs> it's a lot of work for me, anyway. Um, I didn't know that. I thought it was a. Uh, which, which, which one do I? Uh, which one do I? Screw up on all the. Screw up on the. Most. It, it, it'd be that one for me. Uh, <laughs> I can name it. We have a whole second album in the can. We just haven't recorded it uh, yet. We've recorded maybe a quarter of it. Uh, there's a lot of new music out there, so. And this guy is always coming up with new material constantly. So, I think Bloody Mary and uh, is kind of hard on me. And uh, pissing on the beast would be the hardest for me because it's so vocal and it's just breathy. And uh, pissing on the beast, Bloody Mary, which I'm getting better at. Uh, but uh, Benghazi bitch was kind of rough too. It's very, it's very riffy, and. Uh, but uh, but I'd say those, you know. I think yeah, I think pissing on the beast. Uh, I'll, I'll also equate those to my favorites, some of my favorites, because I like I like the challenging ones. So yeah. Oh yeah. Was the There's, 
was the mental hospital part of your bio accurate? Uh, most of it kind of was. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what they put in there. Uh, it said something along the lines of that you just had been sent there for a while when you were younger. I was sent there uh, when I was age 14. I was considered a uh, danger and threat to... Uh, I guess they considered me a danger and a threat, so my attorney pulled off some instead of me going to a detention center or doing time till I was like 21 years of age, which was basically what they would have done. Uh, they put me uh, in there, but it was it wasn't like an actual mental hospital. Hospital, it's more like a uh, kind of home for uh, excitable young men and women. Wayward, but it, but wayward it, youth. Yeah, but it was on the grounds of a mental hospital. Gotcha. Nearby neighbors, then. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we we would see those people, uh, so we wasn't totally isolated from them. They'd let us walk around on the grounds and stuff, so we'd see them. Was there? Did you ever see, like, uh, just someone go absolutely crazy and had a straight jacket him and just kicking and screaming? Uh, well, I've seen that all through my life, believe it or not, and in more just situations than what I was when I was young. Um, I actually, as I grew up, um, kind of started keeping my nose clean, and I actually went from where I was to actually taking care of a mentally handicapped and disabled people. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, I did that, uh, I think, when I was like 23, and I did it kind of professionally for uh, five years, but uh, but I was real good to them and the, the places they were at, you know, so I went from what I was when I was young to actually uh, kind of taking care of those people as a yeah. technician. I gotcha. Uh, what kind of movies do you guys watch? Horror. Hell yeah, me too. Tons of horror Wrong movies. Parents, all of them. Uh, should have been watching Disney too, actually. <laughs> well, my Gage. daughter cons me into that. You know, so yeah, I, uh, I like uh, I like sci-fi and I like psychological drama where somebody's just like real damn sadistic. I love that. Man. Oh, it's great. You know, Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. Uh, you know, looking forward to Avatar two. Someday. Yeah. Uh, Someday. I saw uh, an interview with somebody like a year ago about that movie, and they were like. Uh, I think it was Zoe something is her name in the movie. And she's like, I shot my scene seven years ago. I have no idea when it's coming out. <laughs> I know the uh, the COVID pandemic had a lot to do with it. They uh, were supposed to be filming in New Zealand, I believe. But uh, they had to postpone everything. Hopefully that will all be clearing up again soon. So We hope. Uh, what's the hardest song you ever had to write in your career so far, Boogie? Um... As far as emotionally, it could be anything. Maybe the the lyrical content was just hard to get out of your head into the, onto the paper. It could be something that was just emotional, and you were uh, maybe you didn't want to show everybody a, a side of you or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing some stuff out uh, there. Well, it'd probably be a song I'm right now that I don't think the band's even heard. I don't know. We might have tried to play it that one time. I went to hell. Yeah. I, I know Ben wasn't around. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a current song I'm writing now. Uh, it may make it on the album. It's called I Went to Hell. It's it's like a real life thing where I actually died and went to hell. And, you know, it's, no, it, yeah, it's, it's for real. I was there. And, uh, of course, you know, I got came to and all that, taken to the hospital. and But, uh, it, you know, it just, it's kind of a rough song, you know. For sure. Uh, Anyway. I kind of, I kind of hope it makes the album because I'm interested to hear it. If, if it, well, if... You know, the thing about this new album, a lot of you know, and it's like uh, <clears throat> we, you buy these albums, BG, and they're good albums, but some of them, they all are kind of got the same rhythm vibe to it, and then some of them are seem like they're all in the same key. This new album we got with all this music is like. Uh, I think we have enough for a double album right now. <laughs> well, maybe, but it's all the the each song is us. It's our true selves, and it all sounds like us. But each song has its own unique personality. It has its own uh, flavor. It has its own vibe. 
So you're not going to get bored. You know, it's uh, it, it's kind of like a, a roller coaster. You you're going up and down uh, on different songs and different subject matter, and uh, it's really cool. And different keys that it's in, different beats. Uh, you know, so it's very versatile. Very versatile. But it, we still keep, you know, unlike Tears of Gasoline, Tears of Gasoline was a good album. But you got to remember, I hired studio musicians for that. And uh, I just said, play, make it sound good. And these were great guys. They really were. But with Doc uh, on, on drums and, uh, and Ben on bass, uh, we've been able to really fully up the, uh, what the Boogie Pop Assassin sound should sound like. Oh, yeah. And uh, so you will get that on this next album. And uh, I didn't want to announce this till today. I, the band doesn't even know. Uh, but I might tell you the name of the new album. Breaking what? news. We got breaking news yeah. right here on the show. Let's go. All right. All right. <laughs> My band, we're going to be in a fight probably after this show. <laughs> but the, I hope the not. new album is called... Uh, the All American Psychedelic Slut Monkey. Hell yeah. Interesting title. Okay. <laughs> why? Why did you go with that title? Uh, it it came out. Uh, well, I, how that came about? I was uh, at the hospital with uh, uh, my girl, and she was. Uh, they had these sock puppets, right? And one of them, it was a little monkey-like thing, and I, I picked it up and I said, you know what, some people what would consider this a racist thing or something like that. And she says, oh, well, that's a, that's a slut monkey. <laughs> I thought she said slut monkey. I said, a slut monkey? What is a slut monkey? She said, no, a sock monkey. I said, oh. <laughs> so that name just caught in my head, <laughs> Slut Monkey. I thought, well, that sounds like a punk rock band. Right. I you love Slut Monkey. Do you like that? I dig it. And I so I, I'm kind of thinking, well, Slut Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a play with words, right and uh, it don't really mean a damn thing. <laughs> I think some of the best things in life you don't even have to have a meaning. I, I love but it, I just thought it sounded cool. I said, well, oh, I'm, I'm going to name the album. All American psychedelic slut monkey. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> she, she's taking my yeah. My, she's back there taking credit for it. So I have to thank her right now for for uh, helping me out with that. Uh, can we title. can we expect it possibly maybe like winter time release or maybe mm -hmm. early twenty two? We're we're hoping. We're hoping. We're about ready to do a Kickstarter campaign. And uh, when we do, we'll keep you updated. Uh, we're about ready to go ahead and launch that within one to three weeks, the campaign. And uh, once we raise the money for that campaign, uh, it looks like we're going to be going to Nashville uh, with some guys who recorded some big artists because it's, uh, you know, we're going to make it sound damn good, you know, and we got a lot of good songs and it's going to take some time and money. So we, uh, we're going to do some crowdfunding. You know, Rob Zombie does that for his movies. I thought that was a cool thing, you know. I did not know that. How, yeah, well, for one, the, the Halloween, I think it was the Halloween movie. Uh, was it? On an interview, he, yeah, he, he does crowdfunding on some of his movies, at least one. the title? I can't remember. It was a number. Was, I know he did it on that one. one. Yeah, I think, I think it is called 36 or something like that. Yeah, he did it for that one. And at the end, of course, for all the credits, everybody who contributed, their name was on there. So, you, you know, anytime, you know, $10,000 back in the day to record a decent record album, that was back then. You know, way back then when that band Quarter Flash, remember them? I'm going to harden my heart. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, so it, it takes a little bit of money, but, you know, you sound good and it brings out, you know, who you really are. How long? How far is the drive from Knoxville to, to Nashville? It's about well, for three me, hours. Yeah, about two. I just did it last week. Yeah, yeah. Three. I can yeah. get there. I can get. Not bad. I can get there in two and a half. Not too many hills. <laughs> Once you get over the plateau. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's not too bad. You mentioned yeah. earlier that you wanted to plug or shout out some other people. I would say maybe now would be a good time to do that while we're still thinking about it. Well, I'd like to thank God I'm still alive. Uh, number one. 
uh, he's, he's blessed me with a lot, uh, you know, a family, my music. Uh, I'm not going to not thank him for that. I'd be a fool. I'd like to thank my, my bandmates. Right, I bought I bought to the damn face because they've been good friends of mine. We, we work well together. Uh, I'd like to thank, um, you know, my fiance, my little girl, you know, for they have to live with me. You you got to give them a big hand. That's these guys. I'm not easy to get along with. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Amelia Wright does our photos or does some of mine, and they're they're kind of popular in some places. So I'd like to thank Julia and Walter Wright and uh, for all that. Of course, Jeff Carl Lawrence, mm -hmm. our sound and lighting guy. And uh, Lisa Kent as well. Lisa Kent has done some photography for us. We'd like to thank her. Uh, but most of all, we just like to, what well, a lot of artists, uh, what we like the most as musicians uh, is just when people come up to say, man, that, that, that song really means something to me, man. That's just damn good as money. So. I think our fans uh, are people at least halfway appreciate us uh, somewhat. I think that's who I'd really like to thank. Because uh, uh, in the music industry, your only friends is the people who actually appreciate your music. Well said. Well said. Who was the, the label that you guys were on that you mentioned earlier that had set up the tour? That, that, felt like? <laughs> that was uh, Methanstropic uh, Records. All right. Yeah. I get the vibe. We won't mention them I'm not, anymore. I'm not on that label anymore, <laughs> baby. I'm on my own and we're going. But now we are uh, uh, probably along with the, uh, after the album release, uh, we've been talking to uh, some people in California and uh, they're wanting to kind of pick us up, uh, put us on tour. They're not going to be messing around with our royalties or uh, copyrights, but they're going to want to put us on big tours with. Uh, what was he talking? Uh, I fingered death punch, Marilyn Manson uh, type people. Those Europe. names were mentioned, yes, yes. Those names were mentioned, but uh, some of the, not Bonnaroo, but festivals like that. And they they also used to put people on the Ozfest. So uh, we're getting, uh, after this album is done and uh, we've got some shows under our belt, we, we got some pretty big people going to hopefully be ready to promote us, it looks like, because they, they came to us. So. Uh, that's awesome C congrats yeah. well boys that's actually all the questions i had written down uh, i'm trying to think if there's anything else i can think of off the top of my head one more person i'd like to thank point <laughs> you bg <laughs> we appreciate it thank you i appreciate you guys just even watching an episode telling somebody about the show that's it's completely built around word of mouth um so i thank you guys for doing your job and Brother uh Bob, cool. showing you someone you what's up bob <laughs> he said hello uh i one thing i did want to mention is uh have you got a chance to i noticed you haven't but is there anything I, any way i can help you get your your facebook url to remember we had discussed that before yeah i'm still have what you got to realize is um i i excel very high in in some ways above anybody else uh, but in some ways I don't, uh, let's put it this way. If I was to go to a, uh, school of technology, I would be in the special ed class. <laughs> I got so you. I, I could use some help with that thing. Well, believe it or not, I actually build computers. <laughs> well, well, maybe so Ben I could help. I can't. You may think of this not, is actually, not, not. this is the Facebook URL. I know it's, uh, cause it's, about it's hard. I, it's, I, I can't tag you a lot of times in some of the posts. Yeah. Because it says profile dash like a bunch of numbers instead of having a uh, actual. Yeah, I keep going through there and I read it and I, you know, and it's uh, I don't know what's wrong with it, you know. So, uh, I think I think you've sent me a couple of things and I followed the, uh, the directions. It's just like uh, it, it's funny, you know. I I edit all that the the video. I'm I'm great at Photoshop, but some simple thing like Facebook just stumps me. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm the opposite. I'm terrible at Photoshop. I'm okay at video editing, but I'm no good at, at picture editing. <laughs> it's the Boogie Pop Assassin, though. Don't forget the D at the beginning. So, well, it's kind of run up there above us that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. there we go. The. I didn't know. <laughs> like, well, 
<laughs> who do you, that's who we play with, man. Oh. That's who you play with. Oh, okay. I, I have to put it up there, too, so I remember oh, who I am. I got you. Yeah. I see the booty part. I thought it yeah. was Bob only. But, All right. No, right on. No, it's not, not we're, 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 we're back. We're on. Well, gentlemen, I, I very much appreciate you guys doing this. Uh, Boogie, Ben, and Doc, thank you guys for spending some time with me. And uh, we look forward to hearing the new album, which has the craziest, can you say the craziest it? Can you title. Say it? Can the, you remember? The psychedelic, I'm missing a word, psychedelic something slut monkey. Okay, it's La All American Psychedelic Slut Monkey. The All American Psychedelic Slut la, Monkey. La, like French. Oh, la, la. la. Oh, okay, I didn't catch that. All American la, uh, Psychedelic, all American <laughs> psychedelic <laughs> Slut Monkey. Uh, Hopefully drop the, in the, in the, winter yeah. or early 2022. Um, I, I wish you guys the best in your recordings in Nashville. That's awesome. You said it was uh, Tim McGraw uh, is recorded there. Brett Michaels is recorded there. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hopefully oh, they left a little energy in the air for you guys when you get there. I'm all about positive energy, so hopefully I'll send some positive energy right now to you guys. And um, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. You're more than welcome to any time to, to hop on camera during a live stream if you'd like, just to review a couple bands with me. Um, every now and then we have people do that. So if you're ever interested, just let me know. We'd love to have you. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for having us on your show. You guys are rock stars, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too, BG. Appreciate it. Cheers.